So, a very warm welcome everyone to this short um, presentation, short webinar about Twinket IoT. So, it's a short webinar because it's not the usual webinar length like 30 minutes, it's only 15 minutes in total. So, because it it will cover, of course, it will give you a general overview about the status of Twinket IoT and also give you an example for a cloud application that you can use Twinket IoT with. So if you have any questions, um, of course, there's the question window on the right hand side of this webinar software. Um, just throw in all of your questions and we will answer the questions after the webinar. So there will be a short Q&A round um, in which we will answer most of your questions. So Twinket IoT is a product family and Twinket IoT has been announced about one and a half years ago on the SPS IPC Drives trade show. And Twinket IoT, first of all, provides easy connectivity for IoT communication. What does that mean? So basically it means that Twinket IoT enables you to use public cloud services like Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services or also IBM Watson and many, many others. Um, but you can also use your own private cloud system um, of course, there are some prerequisites for that, but I will cover that later. So, and you can use Twinket IoT to send data to one of these cloud services or receive data from one of these cloud services. So, Twinket IoT, uh, from a connectivity point of view, is all about standardized communication, which means you can use protocols like MQTT, you can use AMQP, and you can, of course, also use OPC UA to establish connectivity to one of these cloud services. Twinket IoT also uh, has an own smartphone app and it therefore also enables uh, push technologies to wearable devices. So you can use function blocks within your PSC logic to send alarms to wearable devices. So this can be, for example, um, a smartwatch. So if you have, for example, an Apple Watch and you have the corresponding uh, Twinket um, IoT app, um, which is called the Communicator app, you can receive push notification messages directly on your smartwatch from your machine. So, like I said, Twinket IoT is a software package. It's actually a product family. And uh, one of the first products has now also been released. So, it's the TF6701 IoT communication product, which is basically a PSC library. So, you can reference this PSC library within uh, your PSC project, and then you can use MQTT, Publisher, Subscriber, Technologies, Communications, um, initiated from within your PSC logic. So, you have different function blocks available, which enable you uh, to, first of all, establish connectivity with the so-called MQTT message broker, which can sit anywhere. It can sit in the public cloud, it can sit in the local network, so it's only a piece of software. And you can also even install it on an industrial PC if you want. So, these function blocks enable you to establish a connection to such a message broker, and you can, of course, also use um, uh, security mechanisms like TLS, so you have uh, the possibility to use username and password, certificates um, to further encrypt your communication channel. And after that, after you have initiated your um, connection to the MQTT message broker, you can publish messages, so you can publish data structures, single variables, arrays, so whatever is on your mind. And you can also subscribe to data, meaning you can receive data from this MQTT message broker. So when you receive data and when you publish data, it's of course, it's the, the question is what kind of data format would I like to use, right? So of course you can use the binary data format, so which is very efficient, but you can also use a JSON uh, formats. And for this, we have also implemented an own PSC library uh, that enable and support you uh, in JSON parsing within your PSC. So you can use regular sex and DOM parsing technologies uh, to handle JSON messages within your PSC logic. And this library is also available within the latest uh, Twinket 3.1 release, which is built 4022.0. The next product is the IoT data agent, so TF6720. And it's basically an application that runs outside of the context of the Twinket PLC, of the Twinket real time. So it's a gateway application that you install uh, on a Windows computer and that runs totally outside and independent of the Twinket real time context. So 
the data agent can connect to the Twinkit runtime and it can be Twinkit 2 or Twinkit 3, either via ADS, but you can also use OPC UA. So there is an OPC UA client implemented in the IoT data agent, which you can use to, of course, connect to the Twinkit OPC UA server, which is another supplement product, but you can also use the data agent to connect via OPC UA to third party devices. So the only prerequisite is that this third party device has an OPC UA server on board. The parameterization of the data agent is being done via a graphical configuration tool and I will also show you an example for that later during this presentation. So it's you don't have to write PSC code for that. There is no PSC library that you have to use. Um, you only start this graphical configuration tool, then you connect your um, ADS variables, so your PSC variables with uh, variables on a cloud service. So it can be an MQTT message broker, it can be the Azure IoT Hub, it can be AWS IoT, IBM Watson IoT, so many, many different options there. And then you just map the PLC variables with variables in one of this, these cloud services. So it's very easy to handle and a great tool to start your um, IoT communication. So to give you an overview about um, the use cases that you can solve with this Twinkit IoT software, um, it's very interesting and for you to know that, of course, you can initiate from within the Twinkit 3 PLC logic, you can initiate MQTT communication with one of these cloud services, right? So with Microsoft Azure, Amazon, SAP, IBM Watson. So, And also um, the Google IoT platform has also announced MQTT as a transport protocol. So you can also use um, the Google IoT cloud for that. And you can also you can do that from within the Twinkit 3 PLC logic. So, but of course you can also in the use case of a retrofit you can also um, get data and grab data from Twinkit 2 controllers. So how do you do that? So basically you, what you do is you install our Twinkit IoT data agent and the data agent um, can communicate with the Twinkit 2 system via ADS and uh, sample the data, sample the variables that you want to send to the cloud and then send it to the cloud using one of these um, transport protocols. But of course, we have also learned that you can use the IoT data agent um, to do OPC UA communication to third-party devices. So if you have a third-party controller that has an OPC UA server on board, you can use our IoT data agent to sample data from this third-party device and send this data to the cloud. So, but we also have announced last year on the Hanover Trade Show, we have announced an um, IoT coupler, so which is the EK9160. It's an it's a an, uh, plain hardware device without any TwinCat on board. So what you basically do is you configure it via a website. So there's no TwinCat involved in the configuration. So you, you just have a website that you open. So this website is running on the device. It's very similar to... Um, from the handling, it's very similar like, like a Fritz box, right? So like a DSL router, where you also have an, a website on the device. You just open your web, the website from your laptop, from your desktop PC, and then you can configure the device. And what you can configure on the EK9160 is, of course, you can configure the message brokers that you want this device to communicate with. So this can be, of course, a Microsoft Azure IoT Hub. So this device is also Microsoft Azure certified. Um, so you can configure it to communicate with the Azure IoT Hub. You can configure it for AWS IoT and for, for many other um, cloud services as well. So, and then um, what you do is then you can then you can also configure the terminals that are being added to this device. So you have um, the device automatically scans for all the attached terminals and displays all the terminals on this website. So you can select a terminal and say, okay, I would like to have this input terminal and this and this and this uh, channel um, to be published to that cloud service. So you can really uh, grab the, the I.O. data directly from, from the terminals and send it to the cloud. And of course, this also goes the other way around. So you can also subscribe to data. So if you have output terminals, like um, digital output terminals, you can also subscribe them to a message broker and then send commands to the EK9160 via the message broker. And then the output terminals are being um, switched on or off depending on the uh, message that comes in.
So it's a very interesting device and it's very easy to handle because there's really no deep Twinket knowledge um, that the, the user has to, to have. So it's really uh, a really good device and, and very, really uh, easy handle. So to give you an example, um, what you can use Twinket IoT or what you can use also the EK9160 with um, a cloud service that's, that has been uh, developed by Microsoft and it's called the Microsoft Azure IoT Suite. So the Microsoft Azure IoT Suite is basically it's a ready to use IoT application. So you just um, you just start and create this application. So it's um, it, it can be created using a couple of mouse clicks, and then on the Microsoft Azure ecosystem, several cloud applications are being automatically deployed. So you don't need to worry about uh, setting up a virtual machine, an Azure IoT hub. So this is all being done in the background automatically for you, and the Azure IoT uh, suite. Uh, the application itself then just utilizes all the different applications on the Microsoft Azure Cloud, for example, the Azure IoT Hub, in order to uh, get incoming telemetry data from the devices and then um, display this data on a graphical uh, dashboard. So the typical applications for that that you can uh, currently create on the Azure IoT suite is a remote monitoring application and this is what is this is what we will also use in the live demonstration in a few minutes. You will have a predictive maintenance application and also an application for connected factories. So the data ingest, like I said, on this Azure IoT suite um, in this remote monitoring application will be done via the Azure IoT Hub. So um, then you can use our TwinCat products like the TF6701, 6720, like we have learned, so the IoT communication and the IoT data agent. And also, of course, the JSON library to generate the JSON messages. And then you can push data uh, to this Azure IoT a suite application and also subscribe da uh, to data uh, from this application. So we will see in a few minutes like, like this is being done in TF6701 and TF6720. So the front end for the user is a website. So it's a website uh, dashboard which you can use to monitor your devices. So you will see a nice charting tool there. Um, you will also see incoming alarms from the devices. So you can configure the alarms. So you can configure limits when an alarm should be raised. Um, so there are plenty of options there and we will all go through them in a few minutes. All right. So. Let's give you a demonstration about that. So if you switch to the web browser, so if you switch to the web browser, it can be Google Chrome, it can be Firefox, and of course the Edge browser can be any, any web browser that supports HTML5 content. And if you navigate to HTTP www.azureiotsuite.com, you will um, automatically uh, be redirected to this um, small website here and you can on this website you can create new solutions so you can create for example the remote monitoring uh, solution that I just talked about you can connect uh, create a connected factory or a predictive maintenance solution uh, so it's really easy to set up all these uh, solutions on the Microsoft Azure IoT suite and it's just a few mouse clicks and then it takes around 15-20 minutes uh, to provision this solution and then it's ready to use. So what you will get then, in case of the remote monitoring solution, what you will get then is, of course, like I said, it's the device portal um, that you will that you will see. So you can log into this uh, nice dashboard here. So you can configure all of your devices. So you can configure different uh, user credentials for for these devices when you set it up. So each, each device needs to authenticate uh, to this Azure IoT Suite application or to the IoT Hub behind, of course. And then you will also see metadata coming from uh, these devices. So you can really, within a device, can describe itself and say, okay, I'm located maybe in a building, main building in the city Fail, country Germany, floor two, and the street Hülshorstweg. And you can also configure like reported properties, um, which will be stored in the device twin of the of the device on the Azure IoT platform. So you can, for example, you can um, configure and send latitude and longitude of the device so that the Azure IoT suite knows where the device is located. 
Um, you can send the de uh, device manufacturer, firmware, installed RAM, uh, processor, so many, many other options. And you can pretty much define them on your own, right? So, and I will also show you later how, how this is being done. So, the next thing is that you can also configure rules. So, a rule um, just tells the Azure IoT Suite remote monitoring solution um, if there are any incoming uh, tags that should be monitored. For example, if a device sends a data field temperature or humidity, um, a rule defines, okay, if the temperature uh, is greater than uh, 42, then an alarm should be raised, or if the humidity is greater than 8, then an alarm should be raised as well, and you will see the alarms on the dashboard. So if you switch to the dashboard here, um, you will see the alarms here and the alarm history. So alarms are being raised here and also uh, placed on this uh, tabular overview here with a um, timestamp. And of course, you will see the live data here coming in. So you will you can select from different devices. So two devices are currently sending no data, but my laptop is sending data. So you can switch to my laptop and uh, you will see the temperature, humidity and the wind speed that this device is currently publishing. So in this uh, charting tool. So the device is currently publishing every two every two seconds. But you can, of course, the device itself can, can pretty much define on, on its own how fast the data should be sent. Okay, so let's see how this is being configured in one of our IoT products. For example, the TF6701, so which is the, the function blocks for the PLC. So if I switch now to the Twinket 3 PLC, um, this is a sample project that you can also download from our website for the TF6701. Um, and this uh, sample project that shows you how to communicate, first of all, with the Azure IoT Hub, but with the Azure IoT Suite in general. So what you will see here is, of course, that some parameters are being automatically created. Um, and then the most important part is for the connection to the Azure IoT Hub is the Azure SAS token. So every device has an own SAS token on the Azure IoT Hub. And this SAS token is then being used for authenticating uh, this device here, my laptop, to the Azure IoT Hub in order that this device is being able and allowed to send data to this um, IoT Suite application. So and this is what happens here in the following. Of course, um, so the data, where where is my data? My data is being created here. So I'm just creating some random data. So I don't have any IOs here at my laptop. So I just create some random data, um, temperature, humidity, and wind speed. I, I just do some calculations. And what I do then is I, I've created this small uh, helper function, which then creates a JSON message um, of this, of this uh, generated data. And then this JSON message is being published using our TF6701 um, to the Azure IoT Hub. So let's log in. Let's see how, how this looks like in online view. Um, so basically here is you see your JSON document so this is what you see here. So this data is being generated every two seconds at the moment and at the same time is being sent out to the Azure IoT Hub. And this is the JSON document that, that I currently send up to the Azure IoT Hub. So I have also talked about the device shadow, and this is what's what's being done here. So I send up some device information, and I store this device information here in my string, and this is, of course, also a JSON message. So and this is the data that you also saw on the Azure IoT Suite application. So you see the latitude and the longitude of the device, the manufacturer, the firmware, installed RAM processor, but you can pretty much add, add your own properties if you'd like. So um, you can pretty much define your own properties. You send them up to the IoT Suite application, and then these properties are being stored in the device twin uh, of the device and shown on the dashboard as well. And of course, as you see here, um, the portal itself is also secured using username and password, meaning your uh, Windows or your Microsoft Live ID. So not anyone can see the website. Of course, they can navigate to it, but they are required to log on. And you can also define on the Azure ecosystem in the so-called Active uh, Azure Active Directory service, you can pretty much define which Live ID has access to this website and which Live ID is, is an administrator or, uh, to this website or also only has maybe a read access to this website. 
Okay, so this was the TF6701. Um, of course, we also have the data agent. So the data agent, like I said, it's a graphical configuration tool and the data agent itself is running in the background. So you use the graphical configurator here to, uh, first of all, configure your ADS connectivity. Um, so you can conf also configure your IoT hub gate. So which means the, the device credentials, the SAS token, uh, to the Azure IoT Hub, and then you can define the publisher. So the publisher is, is sending the data to the IoT Hub. So, of course, then the question is what kind of data? And this is um, what you see here. So it's very it's very similar to Twinket. So in Twinket, you also do a mapping um, between uh, process variables, and this is what you do here too. So you have an ADS gate. You have the three variables coming from the Twinket system, from the Twinket PSC, the temperature, the humidity, and the wind speed, and then you just map them to uh, corresponding symbols on the Azure IoT Hub gate, and uh, then you define what data format should be used um, when sending these symbols. In our case, of course, it's a JSON data format so that the website can also interpret the data you define uh, how how fast should the data be sent, what kind of sampling mode should be used. In this case, we specified that the data should be used every two seconds, so which means 2,000 milliseconds as a cycle time. And you can all, but you can also uh, choose a different sampling mode. So on data change, only if the variable change, uh, the data should be sent out, or maybe by trigger. By trigger means you can define a trigger symbol. A symbol that is getting monitored and when a, a limit has been reached for this monitored symbol then the data is being sent out either continuously as long as the limit is being um, uh, has been reached or only once so you can define different different settings here okay so when you're done here with the configuration of course you can um, you need to to deploy it to the target system and then the target a system where the data agent runs. It can, of course, be also my local laptop here, or it can be a, a remote controller where the data agent runs. You can then just um, start restart the data agent on the corresponding device, and then the data agent is, is sampling the ADS data and sending it to the Azure IoT Hub gate. All right, so let's switch back to the presentation. So, and there's only one last slide left. Um, do you have any questions? If so, um, please use the question window for now. We will now uh, try to answer uh, all of your questions. And um, if you have further proposals for future topics, maybe um, just let us know. Send us an email to uh, go to webinar at backoff.com. And uh, for most current webinars, themes, dates, and records, um, go to www.backoff.com slash webinar. Thank you very much.